panic. It's a panic in Ukraine, so everyone wants to save their life. If I don't uh, have my uh, son, uh, maybe I will. I would live with my mom, with my husband, with my uh, dad. Uh, but for now, I need to to save my life. That is the heartbreaking story of just one among millions of refugees fleeing Ukraine in what has become the biggest refugee crisis in Europe since World War II. As Politico's Eugene Daniels writes, it's a journey that many never thought they would have to make until they had to. Daniels shares the stories of three people and how their lives were upended due to Russia's invasion, like Irina a mom leaving her husband behind in Ukraine as she takes her kids on a three-day-long journey to the Polish border. There's Ekaterina, who fled with their son and celebrated his 14th birthday with a slice of cheesecake during a stop along their travels to Switzerland. Also, Bogdan, who's thousands of miles away as his mom living in Ukraine is in denial that the war would reach her and waited until the very last minute to leave. Luckily, with the help of local friends, multiple train rides and flights, Bogdan and his husband safely reunited with his mom in Paris. And joining me now to discuss an incredible piece, Eugene Daniels, White House correspondent at Politico and MSNBC contributor. He's covering the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine and reported on those heartbreaking stories I just shared. Eugene, the details of the stories that you covered are absolutely devastating. I cannot even... Imagine, tell us more about the people fleeing Ukraine that you've spoken to. Have, have they actually reached safety at this point? Yeah, they are. These three people I talked to, three very brave um, and just in general, but also brave to share their story because of the possibility of blowback, um, depending on how this thing shake out um, in their home country. There are three of two million refugees who've left Ukraine in 12 days. Okay, that is an insane amount of human humanitarian issues and concerns and a crisis. Um, the fastest moving um, refugee crisis this country, the world has seen in generations. Um, and, you know, talking to them, the thing that you felt most was some folks didn't expect this to happen. They didn't expect it to happen as fast. You know, Arina in, in December told her daughter that pack a go bag so we're ready to go um, if anything does happen, because at that point, thousands of tr Russian troops were at the border. Um, and she also told her daughter, heartbreakingly, learn Polish, because they knew they had family in Poland that they could go to, go get on Duolingo, watch Polish cartoons so you can learn a new language, because she knows that it is going to be very difficult for them to get back. Um, like you said, Katia Ekaterina, um, Katya, you know, she had a 14-year-old son, and she picked up folks along the way, helping other folks as she got there, and she cried over and over on Zoom, talking to me about how lucky she was and how guilty she felt. And Bogdan, you know, when you're, when you're reported telling these stories, um, whether it's about a humanitarian crisis or politics, you're supposed to kind of stay as stoic as you can and, and really try to focus on what you're doing. With all of these stories, I was crying, but with Bogdan especially, he is 33 years old. His mother is 55. I am 33 years old with a 55-year-old mother. And so just talking to him about the fear that he felt, talking to her, as she said, and had basically told him that, I think I'm going to just die here, and, you know, I'm just going to have to be okay with that, you know, that is heartbreaking. And so you know, not a ton of, of refugee stories, just three folks, um, but hoping to give people a view into what you know, what this crisis is really about. It is about war, but it's also about these people and the fact that their lives are forever changed. One of the things I think um, your piece uh, did well is it, it really gave us an insight into the shock Right. So when you talk about um, a mom telling her children to pack a go bag, I mean, that's at least some anticipation that something could go wrong. But but that's that's actually a little bit of an anomaly throughout your piece. Everyone is sort of just still in shock. I mean, give us a sense of of how they're processing the shock, but also trying to sort of move forward and figure out 
a place where they can go to be safe and take care of their families now that, you know, the shock has worn off a little bit, maybe? Yeah. I mean, Arena's a um, journalist, right? And so the reason that she felt like she was prepared was because she has been thinking about this and about this war, war and this, excuse me, this invasion for a long time. So that's why she felt that she was prepared and was able to get her daughter ready. The other folks weren't, right? Just like you said, there's this shock of um, maybe this might happen, maybe something could happen, but it's not. And, you know, when she was trying to leave, was trying to get her family members to go with her, but they wouldn't because um, in the media, folks kept saying there's a war coming, there's a war coming, and people just frankly got used to that idea. And so they said when it was time, they were like, well, it's not happening. You guys said this the other day. Um, and for Katya, she's someone who left Eastern Ukraine in 2014 because of some of the separatists, Russian separatists that were there. And even she didn't think that this was going to happen. And so, you know, I talked to all three of them since the piece post, uh, posted, and the shock is still there, you know? And I think they're in this, still in kind of like the fog of war, the fog of being refugees. And the only way for them to, to kind of focus on some of these things is to try to help other people. You know what I mean? You have Katya connecting folks with car, who have cars to other refugees who are trying to get out. Bogdan um, started a nonprofit here in the United States um, for LGBTQ Ukrainians, right? And so that is a different subset that also needs help. Um, and you have uh, when when the journalist what she what she what she told me is you know I'm going back at some point I'm going back to my country I am not going to leave I, I I am not a refugee and so all of these people are still struggling to keep wrap their minds around it and I will say I talked to. Um, refugee experts and, and humanitarian organizations. And what they say is there's so much danger in this because these are women and children, right? The Ukrainian president made it impossible for men by men that could fight in a war, um, I think it's 18 to 60, from leaving. So these are older folks, these are women and children, and they um, are in extra danger. Some of these people don't have any kind of documentation when they leave, putting them in all types of danger when it comes to trafficking um, and all sorts of other issues. And so outside of the stress of leaving the war, not being able to go to your home, there are many of them that are still going to be in danger for years to come. And that's, that's not hyperbole. That's just a fact. We only have one more minute left, but I want to give you an opportunity to, to talk to the Americans at home. We were talking earlier in the show about gas prices and the ways in which Americans here at home are going to feel some of the impacts of the policies that the administration is implementing as a, as a consequence of this crisis. Um, speak to them. What do you want them to know about the stories and the people that you talk to for this piece as they do go to the gas pump and see the prices higher? I mean, you spoke to the people on the ground. What do you want them to, to think about as uh, they're pumping their gas and going about their lives here? Yeah, I mean, you know, gas prices being higher, that's hard. People not being able to afford gas, that is really difficult. But I cannot imagine, other than hearing their stories, it's still hard to digest um, what these people are going through and what how their lives are forever changing, some of them forever destroyed because of what happened. And so, right. you know, I try to keep that in mind. I think, you know, the American people keep that in perspective as we're moving through our lives and the impacts that that's having over here. Um, in Ukraine, there's no comparing the, what those experiences are like, because some of these people will right. never, ever get to go home ever again. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.